Matthew Stuckey here from Verity Baptist Church Manila and Verity Baptist Church, Church Pampanga with a quick missionary update. And, uh, you know, just waking up here on a Tuesday morning and uh, just giving you quick totals. And this past week we had a total of 73 salvations, which uh, is really good results. Um, our numbers have been increasing recently. Uh, things were kind of tough in Pampanga. We did have double-digit soul winners, but, um, you know, we were kind of in a... The houses were a little bit nicer, so people were a little bit less receptive. And then in Manila, though, we found a good spot on Saturdays for our soul winning. We're not able to get 50 salvations on Saturday like we used to when we had a big group that went out to um, Quezon Memorial Circle. That opportunity right now is not open, but we're, we're finding better areas, so that's good. And then on Sunday, we had a lot of soul winners, and we've had a lot of new soul winners here the last several months, um, new people coming out. Had double-digit amount of female soul winners, which um, it's the first time we've had that in a while. Because of the lockdown that we've had, um, it, it's it's caused restrictions on people coming out to public. If you're under the age of, I think, 19, uh, you're not allowed to be out in public. You might be under the age of 21, I'm not sure. And so for the last seven and a half months, it's been illegal for uh, children to be out. As a result of that, um, you know, for in terms of soul winning, you know, you're not really able to have husbands and wives both go out with young children. And so that has restricted uh, some people from going out. Just recently, um, on Sundays, my wife has been going soul winning instead of me. I've been watching the kids at the building just because, you know, I'm going out during the week. I want my, my wife to have an opportunity to go. Unfortunately, due to the, the strict lockdown, though, you know, children are being, um, are not allowed to go out. And it has, is something that has been subject to, you know, punishment, arrest, or fine in certain areas. So it's, it's a chance that, uh, you know, I just don't think is worth taking at this point. So um, that's one reason why we haven't had as many uh, female soul winners. But this past week we had double digit, which is great. And so we had a lot of salvations on Sunday included in our 23, or uh, 24 salvations on Sunday, but included in our overall 73 salvations for the week. So anyways, just continue to be in prayer for us, especially about that. Um, Obviously, it's been a really long time. It's really difficult when you have uh, families and they're not able to go out in public. And I know it's restrictive in a lot of places in the U.S. and in other locations where you might watch these missionary update videos. But for the last eight months, you know, children are not allowed out in public here. And so it makes things very difficult being restricted at home for a really long time. And I do believe they're going to start opening things up. Um, I know I read online recently in an article how Manila has the strictest lockdown in the entire world longer and stricter than anywhere else and uh, it, it's been more than half a year at this point and um, the cases have started to go down which is good so I think that will make them a little bit more lenient but um, they are very careful with uh, people's health they do have fears about that and so I've, I've heard because the end of this month they still have uh, the GCQ that we're under a general community quarantine I've heard in November they might change that to the modified general community quarantine but there's no guarantees. And if that's the case, then maybe children will able to be able to start going out, but um, we're not sure. That's restricted us from being able to have everybody at church and things such as that. It's also restricted us from really making any uh, set plans on the missions trip. I know people have asked me, and I don't think people realize how strict it is here right now because most places in the world, they've opened things up, and, and here they're very strict, they're very careful, they're very cautious, and it's really hard to make... Um, those sorts of plans when we don't really know um, what the stipulations are going to be. It's, it's really tough when they're not allowing, not allowing children out and stuff like that. I'm not sure it would be really uh, worth having a missions trip. If it, if it were now, it wouldn't be worth having a missions trip because people just wouldn't enjoy themselves that much. There'd be a lot of restrictions, I believe. But they are starting to open up tourism spots because to uh, protect the economy. And so I, I do believe things are going to change. It's just hard to make set plans at this point. So please be in prayer for that. Um, we're hoping things will go back to normal. As a church in Manila and in Pampanga, we have had new visitors come and new families and stuff like that. But I've really, I've really looked at this time period as one where we're not really trying to grow as a church. I mean, obviously we would love to grow. But I'm just kind of like, we're just trying to maintain the people that we have because we have families that are not able to come. And it's really hard to make um, any sorts of plans for big activities and things like that. Um, even the sermon series I preached for a while I was kind of preaching on kind of a holding pattern of various different sermons, but but not necessarily preaching sermons where everyone had, there's certain sermon series, you know, you want everyone in your church family to hear. And I understand they listen online, but it's not quite the same thing. So it's kind of holding off on that, but it's been so long that I, I don't even know what's going to happen in the future that I've kind of decided to go to those series that I think are good character-building series. 
and stuff like that. And so just continue to be in prayer for us. Obviously, we're doing a lot of soul winning and getting a lot of people saved. But obviously, the quality of life is not as high as it was, you know, a year ago. And we would really love to have things return back to normal or semi-normal, um, you know, the new normal, you know, whatever. Anyways, the sermons this past week, um, I preached in Revelation 20. I preached on the millennium, Revelation 20b. Got a lot of sermons coming from Revelation 20. There's a lot of information. Uh, Pastor Amen has preached a sermon on the millennium or the millennial reign of Christ a few years ago at, uh, I think, one of the preaching conferences where he preached a faithful word or something like that. And I thought it was a great sermon. I listened to that in preparation for this sermon. And I changed a few things around, but honestly, a lot of it was just, just the same. You know, I learned a lot from the sermon. It was a great sermon. And so, um, you know, I preached on the millennium on uh, Wednesday. And then we're continuing the series on church problems. We talked about envy, and we talked about the interior causes of envy. Next week, we'll talk about the exterior causes, causes on the outside. But we talked about the interior causes, how people that are envious, it's, it's as a result of them being covetous, cocky, or prideful, comparing with one another, and being contentless, not being content with the things that they have. And so when we have a lot of problems in life, when you get really mad at other people and you're envious, Honestly, the, the, the real cause is yourself. It's it's not them. And so that's what we talked about. And then also we, we preached through Romans 7, the flesh versus the spirit. It talks in Romans 7 about being a carnal Christian. And so I preached against Calvinism for a while. Um, obviously, Calvinism has this idea that there's no such thing as a carnal Christian. If you're really saved, you're going to walk the walk and live a good life, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says there's going to be a battle versus the flesh until the day you die, and there's no guarantee being saved that your life's going to magically change or anything like that because your flesh does not change. So anyways, that's what we're, we're preaching through right now, and overall things are going well. Just um, We would love for people that tune into our ministry to just be in prayer for us. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of changes. It does make things more difficult um, being able to grow as a church um, in number, but also spiritually. Many people are not able to come to church right now, which, um, you know, it's been a long time. Obviously, we, we need church, you know, and a lot of people have not been able to come for a while or it's been more difficult or, or they're only able to come from time to time due to various restrictions. And obviously, people are affected financially as a result of all this. So just continue to be in prayer for our church and, and hopefully things will return back to normal um, here as soon as possible. Anyways, thank you and God bless.